Okay, we're going to play the last one here. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in multiple dimensions, part 61, feel. In today's episode, we decided to try a feel approach to get us a out of a little bit of a rut we felt we were in. We generally like to do both feeling and thinking when we compose. And today we tried the feel side. Uh, music we feel speaks in a language distinct from structural and representational. Structural language is when we are babies and we reach for things. It's using our bodies. It's when our bodies move. That's a structural language. Representational language is using words like saying banana I can say banana, but the word banana is not banana, and there's no banana here. I could say stapler, and here's a stapler, but stapler is not the word, it's not the same as the thing. Seems obvious, but we confuse it all the time. So we feel music is another language. It's neither structural, because it's not reaching out with their body, it's not representational, it's not words. Whatever it is, it's its own thing. Um, we also shared with you a quote from Alan Watts, the f philosopher from a while back. I just want you to enjoy a point of view which I enjoy. And that expresses for us what we're doing in these streams. We are sharing with you a process of expressing musically that we enjoy. So back to work, we added an arpeggiation line here, which is the da 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 and then we added the backbone line, which is the dum 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 and the difference it makes uh, is immense, we feel. Just the cadence by itself sounds like this. And then the arpeggiation line by itself sounds like this. It sounds quite intriguing, it gives a little bit of energy to it, and then the backbone line reinforces both of them and so then together we have a strong statement very strong statement so what we're going to do now is play the whole thing for you here we go So that concludes today's stream. What we like about the updates here are we like the uh, the subtle changes that happen when we flip ramp up to trough down 
uh, patterns for the arpeggios. Uh, we like the progressive dissonance at the beginning to the more consonants at the end, and it's it's subtle, and you you don't even perhaps consciously notice it because we're drawing it out over time. However, it becomes uh, it was kind of latent when we just played the cadences, but the, by overlaying it with the arpeggios. Um, it kind of smooths it out, so it's almost sneaking up on you that it's getting more consonant. And then, uh, similarly, the backbone, it's almost, the, well, it is, it's the same notes, Ds and Es and Bs and B-flats playing. Uh, but the fact that they're playing against the cadence, which is the vertical harmony, uh, further smooths out. So you hear the same notes, but they have different feel because they're being played against or on top of a, a cadence that's either dissonant or consonant. So our ideas for next time are to continue to work with Improvisation 3, uh, double check our backbone selection and the ramps, arcs, and troughs, because we're still working out a pattern for when to change the direction of these arpeggios. Um, and then, of course, our good old friend, To Be Determined. A shout out to Chakaruni and Panorama Panda, who stopped by. Thank you. We always appreciate that. Um, tune in next time to see where we go next. Do take care. Do come back and do keep on streaming. <laughs>